Hear, O heaven, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children, have I reared up and brought you? But they never rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey is the master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Our sinful nation, a people laden in iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly, they have forsaken the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. Why will you still be struck down? Why will you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it but bruises and sores. They're raw wounds. They're not pressed out or bound up or softened with oil. Your country lays desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. In your very presence, foreigners devour your land. It is desolate. It's overthrown by foreigners. And the sun of the sun is left like a booth in a vineyard, like a lodge in the cucumber field, like a besieged city. If the Lord of hosts had not left us a few survivors, we should have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. The ultimate statistics is that 10 out of 10 people die. 150,000 people around the world will die today. The question is, where are they going to go? They're going to live forever. The opportunity is up to them. It's either going to be heaven or it's going to be hell. And how you can gauge yourself is in the reflection of the Ten Commandments. The first commandment is to always put God first. Have you always put God first? Have you always woken up in prayer and in love and devotion to the one who gave you life? The second commandment is not to have any graven images. Maybe it's not an idol. Maybe it's a sport. Maybe it's a version of God you made up in your mind. One who is loved and one who would never send anybody to hell. The third commandment is do not take the Lord's name in vain. That saying, oh my G-O-D, or just using it as a cuss word without reverence. It's like taking your mother's name and putting it through the dirty sewer. Would you do that? I certainly wouldn't. The fifth commandment is to honor your mother and father. Have you always honored your mother and father? Have you always listened and done what they said, regardless of if they wanted you to or not, or if they deserved it or not? And also the fourth commandment is keep the Sabbath. The Lord your God has given you one day to give back to Him out of seven. And we need to do this in reverence to Him. The sixth commandment is do not kill. Maybe you haven't murdered anybody, maybe you haven't shot anybody, but have you had hatred in your heart? The Bible says very easily that hatred in your heart is murder. The seventh commandment is do not commit adultery. But Christ himself said, if you look at someone with blood, you've already committed adultery already with them in your heart. Have you committed adultery? The eighth commandment is do not steal. Have you ever stolen? Have you ever punched in at work and just stood around and did, and did nothing? Have you ever sat there and just smoked a cigarette? Or have you taken something from somebody? Have you even taken something from somebody and given it back? If I go into Verizon here and I steal a phone and I give it back because I feel bad about it because the Holy Spirit's working on me, it's still theft. They're still going to call the police and I'm still going to go to prison for breaking that law. The ninth commandment is do not lie. Have you lied? Have you just not told truth? Have you made up exaggerations? Have you always been obedient to being honest? I certainly haven't. The tenth commandment is you should not covet. Have you ever wanted something of, that somebody else had? Have you ever wanted their wife or their husband or anything like that? By our own admission, since we've done all these things, the way we're going to look to God is that we're all lying, thieving, life-giving adulterers at heart who don't listen to our parents, who kill and steal and lie. And we're going to be guilty on Judgment Day. But the good news is, is that God, through Jesus Christ, who is God wrapped in flesh, came to this earth 2,000 years ago. And he hung on a rugged Roman cross. 
And he was smitten and stricken and afflicted for us. Because we've sinned. Very simply, we broke the law and he paid the fine. And what we need to do and what is necessary for salvation is that we repent. Not works righteousness that we have to do something, but because the Holy Spirit has convicted us that we want to be sorry primarily towards God and secondarily towards man. What we need to do is repent of our sin and put our faith in Christ and Him and Him alone who is without sin. The only way for remission of sin the only thing for remission of sin is the shedding of blood. And that's what He did on the cross. What we need to do is repent and put our faith in Christ. And because we do that, He will forgive us of our sins. The law that I spoke of is the schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. It's Galatians 3.24. I pray that you need to call. We're here because we love you, not to condemn you, but we're here to tell you the truth of the gospel. So God can be either your judge or your savior. No, I got it on the I'm with you. My problem is February 22nd, Greenville. At least.